Hello, so today I'd like to talk about symmetric groups. We'll begin by defining a set omega. Omega is the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, all the way up through n. And we'll define a permutation on omega to be a bijection from omega to omega. And you should recall here that a bijection is a map that is both injective, so it's 1 to 1, and surjective, so it's onto, so it's 1 to 1 and onto. Um, now, S sub omega, this is the symmetric group on omega, is simply the collection of all permutations on omega. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Now, suppose we're at a party and we have Anna, uh, Bob, and Kathy. And suppose that Anna is uh, sitting in chair one, Bob is sitting in chair two, and Kathy is sitting in chair three. Now, a little while later, uh, maybe an hour later, you see that Anna is still sitting in chair one, but Bob and Kathy have switched chairs. So Kathy is now in position two and Bob is in position three. So one way you could encode this information is you could say the person in chair one got mapped to chair one. So Anna didn't move. However, the person in chair two later got sent to chair three. And the person in chair three got mapped to chair two. And so what happens is one is fixed and two and three uh, change places. So this, they transposed, it's also caused a transposition. Okay, so um, let's take a look at kind of more generally, how would we represent all of the permutations so all of the permutations on S3. Uh, so this would be on the set of numbers 1, 2, 3. So one permutation would be the do-nothing permutation or the identity map where you just send each of the integers 1, 2, and 3 to um, themselves. So this would be the identity, the identity map. Another thing you could do is you could hold one fixed and then you could have two and three changing places like we did above. Similarly, you could hold two fixed and one could get mapped to three and three could get mapped to one. Uh, another thing you could do is you could have three staying fixed and then one and two changing places. Lastly, you could do kind of like a, um, a rotation where one goes to two, and two goes to three, and three goes to one. Or you could do uh, something else, and you could say, all right, well, I'm going to send one to three, and two to one, and three to two. So uh, let's see how many elements we have here. We have one map here a second one, a third one, a fourth one, a fifth one, and a sixth, we actually have six uh, mappings. And so the way we could write those down is we could write those down as the identity. Uh, this map right here, we could say that's like one goes to one and the two cycle, two goes to three. This next map, we could have uh, one goes to three and three goes to one, so that's a transposition. And two stays fixed for this fourth map, we could have one and two transposing, so that's the two cycle one, two, and three stays fixed. Uh, last, or second to last here, we could have the three cycle one, two, three. So what this means is that one goes to two, two goes to three, and three loops back around to one. And then lastly, we would have one goes to three, and three goes to two, and then again, two sneaks around the outside there and gets mapped back to one. Now, those six elements actually are the elements in the symmetric group S3. So this is a group with the following elements. Let's call this one for the identity. The two cycle two, three, the two cycle one, three, another two cycle one, two, the three cycle one, two, three, and the essentially the inverse of that, one, three, two. So those would be the six elements in S3. 
So as we were talking about symmetric groups, we recall that S sub omega consists of all the permutations on omega. And recall that these permutations are simply bijections from omega to omega. Now the binary option, if I'm binary operation, if I'm claiming that this is really a group, uh, the binary operation here is simply composition of these bijective maps. So let's convince ourselves, first of all, that we've got a group. So to be a group, re recall that we need a well-defined binary operation. And certainly um, composition of bijections gives us a bijection. So that's fine. That's kind of step zero, if you'd like. Um, the other things that we would need to check, uh, first of all, do we have an identity? Well, the identity map, or the identity permutation, is the identity. This is also known as the, the do-nothing map. Uh, secondly, we would need to check that inverses exist. So is that true? Well, certainly if we have a bijection, so if uh, sigma is a bijection, uh, so is its inverse. So not only does the inverse exist, but the inverse is also a bijection. And since sigma omega consists of all the permutations on um, omega, um, if sigma is in there, then sigma inverse is also in there because it's also a bijection um, from omega to omega. So that is satisfied. And lastly, we would need to uh, check associativity, and we would find that that also checks. So uh, let's take a look at how this actually works. So let's take a look at uh, two elements. So let's take a look at two elements. Um, it will be an S4, and let's look at sigma, which is a three cycle, one, two, four. And let's look at tau, which is a two cycle, two, three. And let's take a look at what is sigma tau. In other words, what does that map look like? Well, one way to figure this out is to say, okay, I need to figure out what happens to the elements in S4. In other words, I need to figure out what happens to one, two, three, and four. And the way this is going to work, remember that with composition, composition of functions, we always work uh, with the rightmost function first. Essentially, we're asking ourselves, uh, hey, what does sigma tau do to 1? And kind of thinking back to pre-calc or calculus 1, uh, that's like asking ourselves, what is sigma of tau of 1? And so the first bijection that we need to look at is tau. So let's look at this. What does tau do? Well, reading the cycle notation, um, tau doesn't do anything to the element 1. So 1 is fixed. And then we need to analyze what does sigma do? Well, sigma takes the element 1 and maps it to 2. Okay, let's look at the number 2. What does tau do? Tau takes 2 and maps it to 3. Now what? Well, we have to look at sigma. Sigma doesn't do anything to 3, so 3 remains fixed. Okay, let's look at 3. Let's look at tau. Tau takes 3 and maps it to 2. Going to sigma, 2 gets mapped to 4. Okay, lastly, let's look at 4. Tau doesn't do anything to 4, it remains fixed. Over here in sigma, 4 gets mapped to 1. So reading off what happened here, uh, we learn that sigma tau is equal to 1 gets mapped to 2, so I would write that 1 gets mapped to 2 in cycle notation, 
Then 2 gets mapped to 3, so 2 gets mapped to 3. 3 gets mapped to 4. And 4 gets mapped to 1. Now, rather than writing a 1 here, uh, we don't want to do that. And the reason we don't want to do that is because we already have 1 in our list. So let's get rid of that. And we're going to just close our cycle at this point. And what's interpreted from this cycle notation is that 4 gets mapped to 1. And so here we've answered the question, what does uh, sigma tau look like?